The Lung Meridian of Han Tai Yin. The Lung Meridian of Han Tai Yin originates from the middle energizer, running down to connect with the large intestines. Winding back, it goes along the upper orifice of the stomach, passes through the diaphragm, and enters the lungs. It's pertaining organ. From the lung system, which refers to the portion of the lung communicating with the throat, it comes out transversely. Descending along the medial aspect of the upper arm, it passes in front of the heart meridian of Han Xiao Yin and the pericardium meridian of Han Jue Yin and reaches the cubital fossa. Then it goes continuously downward along the anterior border of the radial side of the medial aspect of the forearm and enters the radial artery at the wrist for pulse palpation. Passing the thenar eminence, it goes along its radial border, ending at the medial side of the tip of the thumb. The branch proximal to the wrist emerges from lung seven and runs directly to the radial side of the tip of the index finger, where it links with the large intestine meridian of Han Yang Ming. The large intestine meridian of Han Yang Ming. The large intestine meridian of Han Yang Ming starts from the tip of the index finger, running toward upward along the radial side of the index finger and passing through the inner space of the first and second metacarpal bones. It dips into the depression between the tendons of muscle extensor pollicis longus and brevis. Then, following the lateral aspect of the forearm, it reaches the lateral side of the elbow. From there, it ascends along the lateral anterior aspect of the upper arm to the highest point of the shoulder, then along the anterior border of the chromium. It goes up to the seventh cervical vertebrae, the confluence of the three Yangming meridians of the hand and foot, and descends to the supraclavicular fossa to connect with the lung. It then passes through the diaphragm and enters the large intestine, its pertaining organ. The branch from the supraclavicular fossa runs upward to the neck, passes through the cheek, and enters the gums of the lower teeth. Then it curves around the upper lip and crosses the opposite meridian of the philtrum. From there, the left meridian goes to the right and the right meridian goes to the left to both sides of the nose, where the large intestine meridian links with the stomach meridian of foot yang ming. Stomach meridian. The main meridian starts at LI20 moves to UB1, then distends to stomach 1, circles the mouth up to stomach 7, stomach 8, and meets Dumai at Du24. There are five branches for the stomach. The main branch, which we just went over, branch 2 is internal, Du14 to stomach 12 to stomach 30, crosses Rin13, Rin12, also SI channel, enters stomach and spleen. Branch 3 is from the organ's stomach itself to stomach 30. Branch four is the tibial branch, stomach 36 to the lateral side of the third toe. And branch five is stomach 42 to spleen one. is the foot tie in, right? Organs entered, it enters three. Of course it enters the spleen stomach, but it also enters the, yeah, it's on the board in case you forgot, but it is the heart. It is 9 to 11 a.m. Good. Now, channel pathology wise, most of the channel pathologies with the spleen just kind of have to do with the organ. Low appetite, loose stool, the typical things that you think of for spleen deficiency. Low appetite, loose stool. But there is one weird one that we would normally think of as a liver condition, but it is a spleen pathology. Jaundice, yeah. Low appetite, loose stool, jaundice. Now you could also use liver points for jaundice, but remember it's ECM, there's different types of jaundice. There is like the damp heat and the liver gallbladder type, 
but there's also the yin jaundice, which is more like the pale yellow. So that's more of like a damp condition, so you can use the spleen channel for that. I feel like the spleen channel, as far as the pathway goes, lends itself really well to kind of like a simple flow chart kind of drawing. Because basically it's just connect the dots from 1 to 13. You know, basically starting on the medial side of the foot, off the medial side of the leg, the thigh, 1 to 13, it's just connect the dots. But then it does a weird little zigzaggy thing, and these red points come up a lot as crossing points. So remember, it will zigzag from 13 to red 3 and 4. Go back out to spleen 14 and 15. Come back in to Ren's head. That little zigzag thing comes up a lot, knowing you know, at least what Ren points it connects to. Now, I'll tell you, all three of those Ren points come up often. They're um, fairly significant. Because Ren 3 and Ren 4, does anybody recall that three Three channels, three yin channels of the leg, all cross run three and run four. Spleen, liver, uh, kidney. Spleen, liver, kidney. All cross run three and run four. Three yin channels of the leg, all cross run three and run four. Anybody recall another point that all three of them cross? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have three points that all three yin channels of the leg cross. Ren 3, Ren 4, and spleen 6. So if you remember that, then pretty clear that of course the spleen channel crosses Ren 3 and 4. Like, you know, that, all three yin channels of the leg do that. Ren's head is another big crossing point on the spleen. Because when we go to Ren's head, the channel then goes in three different directions from there and trifurcates. I may have made that word up, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure it's in the dictionary, but we you know, kind of know what it means. It splits into three. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you say red three, red four, and spleen six? Oh uh, yeah, okay. that the spleen, liver, and kidney all meet at those three points. Okay. But spleen six, of course, is a crossing point on the spleen since it's part of the spleen right. channel. Yeah. Okay. So from Ren 10, significant crossing point, you should know what happens here. From Ren 10, the channel will go in three directions. One branch is easy, it just continues the rest of the channel. Spleen 16 to 21, I mean that's easy enough, of course we have to finish the rest of the channel. One branch goes to the spleen and stomach organ and then remember spreads on the lower surface of the tongue. That comes up often about the spleen, knowing that it goes to the lower surface of the tongue. And then the last, the third and final branch from Ren's head, up to the heart. And remember, the heart's the next channel. So that's the connection, the heart's the next channel. And you may remember, the heart channel starts in the heart. That's how it gets there. So I already gave you the key, key crossing points. It's really those red points are the ones to take note of. Any questions there regarding the pathway or any of that intro stuff before we get to some of the standout functions? All right, so as far as some of the standout functions of the channel, Ren 1, corner of the first toe. Ren 1? I'm sorry, Spleen 1. Corner of, thank you. Corner of the first uh, toenail. You don't talk as much as I do. It's, it's, every once in a while, tongue tied. Or brain tied. It all starts there, I guess. But what's the big standout? I mean, yes, it revives consciousness, all well points do. But isn't there something unusual about Spleen 1? Matza to. I'm going to feed it. To stop bleeding. Yeah, Mark says stop bleeding. Mark 
Um, so you stop reading as kind of a standout. Two is one of those blah points. I mean, again, they could ask its location. They could ask that for any point. They could ask that you know it's a spring point. They could ask those questions for any point. But spleen two is really not one that you use clinically all that often. I mean, heat in the spleen channel is not like a major pattern, so you just don't really hear about spleen two being used that often. But three, third one up on the in channel, so. Source point, yeah, it's a source point. It's also the shoe stream, but it doesn't tend to get used for you know, arthritis all that often, but source point. So as far as this channel goes, that's probably the best point on the channel to just generally tonify spleen chi, treat low appetite, loose stool. The same kind of things that you might use the back shoe point for, the back shoe of the spleen. You could use spleen three. <coughs> These have all been out here since the beginning, so if you grab handouts at the beginning of the class. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. Okay. Grab okay. Let's grab them with everything. I mean, unless you already have them. Okay. So, spleen four. This one, not a very, I mean, it is the Luo point. But it's not one that comes up very often for function, but it does come up for location, um, both as a written <coughs> question and practical sometimes, because people often have trouble finding spleen four. Does anybody remember that you go up the first metacarpal or metatarsal, up the shaft, and you stop as soon as you feel the, the base? It's just distal to the base of the first metatarsal just distal to the base of the first metatarsal. So you know the metatarsal, you know, one of those bone, there's a whole shaft, and you just go up, 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 up. Oh, I feel the base. Okay, there's spleen four. So that's the base, and that's the head, and that's where you put spleen three. So spleen four is just distal to the base of the first metatarsal. Spleen three is just proximal to the head of the first metatarsal. Five, <laughs> Six though, big point, we already said. Three in crossing point, right? Spleen six, spleen, liver, kidney, all meet there. Three in crossing point. So of course you can use it to tonify yin. Tonify blood. Blood's a yin substance, so that pump point comes up a lot to tonify yin, tonify blood, menstruation problems. And if you get a question that says something about all three of those channels or organs, you know, if it says something like, which point would you use to harmonize the liver, tonify the spleen, augment the kidneys? If something like that, where it mentions all three, there's a good chance it's either this point or one of those two. So spleen six, anytime you get something mentioned about all three of those channels, or all three of those organs, certainly think spleen six. Seven never comes up, not a major point. Eight though, she cleft point. So what do we use it for? Pain, exactly, pain in the channel. Particularly good for menstrual pain, because remember, this is a cheek cleft point on a yin channel. So bleeding, so good for menstrual pain. Other pain throughout the channel. Moderate acute conditions, the same kind of stuff. How do you find spleen eight? How many soon below spleen nine is it? Three. So how many soon up does that make it? Ten. Yeah. So just as a warning, they do sometimes get a little tricky with that, where you you need to know it well enough that if they ask it from either direction, you can count it out. You know, if 
they say how many sued up from the ankle is it? You know that it's 10. How many sued below SWE 9? You know that it's three sued below. You know, you got to know the locations well enough and your sued measurements well enough that you can count it from either direction if you have to. And just make sure you read the question carefully. Just be careful, you know what they're asking. Spleen 9, pretty big point. I mean, it is the Hess C point, but um, I mean, it is, but it's just, its functions aren't really specific to that. What do we most commonly use Spleen 9 to treat? Let's see. Anyone know? I think I heard somebody, maybe I'm just making up because it's the one I want to hear, but I think I heard somebody say P. Yeah, it's used for like, <laughs> maybe I'm making that up. <laughs> I guess I am. Yeah, it's basically used for promoting urination, draining dampness, particularly lower jowl, but you could use it for really any kind of edema, leucorrhea, UTIs, anything where you might want to promote urination to clear out dampness. Leucorrhea, UTI, edema. It's a good promote urination, clear dampness type of thing. Ten is also a biggie, about location and function. So remember location. It's too soon above the knee cap, but remember it's at a 45 degree angle. It's not just directly up. You kind of go out 45 degrees, and it's right in the center of, what's that muscle belly? Yeah, the vastus medialis. The vastus medialis is right in the center of that, that muscle belly right here. 45 degree angle out from the upper corner here of the kneecap. But it is also a big point function-wise. Anybody remember what we use it for? You could use it for itching. Yeah, you could use it for itching because of, it's good for um, blood disorders. So it's good for cooling the blood or invigorating the blood. So blood heat would have itching, so it could be used for that. So yeah, it cools the blood, it invigorates the blood. So you can use it for blood stasis, blood heat, and that would include things like rashes, itching. And that's because it's a blood? Like, is that why? Um, well, it's, it's probably more like they classify it that way because it does those things, okay. but yeah, but yes, I mean, that's certainly a way of remembering it and classifying it in your head. Then like 11, 12, 13, not much comes up about them except just know generally, those points are kind of in the medial thigh groin area, so there's always a caution for femoral artery with those points. But they're not major points, we don't use them that often, so just kind of know those in general. Fourteen, not a big point either, but one weird thing that comes up about it is measurement. How many soon below 15 is 14? 1.3. Just one of those silly things that comes up. It's 1.3 soon below 15, or vice versa. You could say 15 is 1.3 soon above 14. But we don't really have to worry about you know, 15 is obvious though, because 15 is level with the umbilicus. We already said that. Or soon lateral the umbilicus. So you're not going to find 15 by finding 14 and going 1.3 up. Weird stuff. Yeah, Jen? Fifteen just it's similar functions to stomach 25. I mean it's intestinal things, loose stool, diarrhea. Things that just kind of make sense based on its location. Nothing unusual. Always remember my first point's practical. I put stomach 25 for soon now, for 2015. I always remember that. Sticks in my craw. You said for soon now? For soon now. 16 is another one not major for function. 
but does come up on either the practical or the written. How many soon up from 15 and 16? Three. Three soon up. Three soon up. I think the reason they asked that one is most channels that are on the chest and the abdomen, it's just like one up, one up, one up, one up. The spleen, you know, you have that one next to the umbilicus, then you go three up, and then you're on the, the ribs after that. So I think that's the reason they tend to ask that. It's just that only one in the center of the abdomen. So 16 does get asked about often. Then the rest in the middle, um, 17 through 20, um, they are six soon out in the rib spaces, just be able to figure out what rib spaces they're in. They're not major points, um, but you know, just know like 17 is in the fifth, then be able to count it out. Right? If 17 is in the fifth, then 18 must be in the fourth, 19 must be in the third, 20 must be in the second, and remember we can't go any higher because what's right above it? Lung one, right? Lung one is in the first, six soon out, so you can't go any higher. So we jump over to 21 on the mid-axillary line. 21 is on the mid-axillary line. Considered to be six soon below the axilla. Remember that three end of the 11th rib, axilla, that's 12 soon, so halfway. The whole measurement, yeah. Right, right. Three and eleventh rib axilla is twelve. Right. Halfway, spleen twenty-one. Anyone know what gallbladder point is? Halfway between spleen twenty-one and the axilla, so it's three swing down. Twenty-two and twenty-three. Twenty-two is exactly there, and then twenty-three is a soon in front of it. But twenty-two and twenty-three, three soon down. They usually do soon measurements for that because it's hard to count the rib spaces out here. So it's usually easier to do the soon measurement than it is to figure out what rib space you're in all the way out here. And twenty-one does have something special about it. Remember, it's the great luo of the spleen. The great luo of the spleen, said to be for pain throughout the whole body, fibromyalgia, conditions like that, pain throughout the whole body. Any questions on any of those points? All right, the spleen, the only one, the only extra path I would highlight is the TMM. Um, I would know, you know, starts at about spleen one and goes up to the genitals. So spleen one just up to genitals. So far, that's just like the regular channel. I mean, that's not really anything weird. But then remember, there's a branch that goes to the umbilicus, the belly button. And then from the umbilicus, remember it goes internal and connects to the front of the spine, or that's kind of the weird thing. It adheres to the front of the spine. And it's used to treat a twisting pain in the genitals that radiates up to the belly button. A twisting pain in the genitals that radiates up to the belly button, the way a hernia might present a hernia Can you wait? Oh, sorry. sorry. That's okay. The spleen one was at the bottom. I got that. Thank you. All right. Heart channel is another one that lends itself to a nice drawing. 
Heart channel is so simple. Heart. Side. Eyes. One through nine. One through nine. And that passes through the lungs. So heart channel, super, super easy that regard. So the alternate name of the heart channel is the hands Shao Yin. Organs we've got here. Heart, SI, hits the lungs. Time of day I'll just give you because that you can always figure out. It's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And what are some pathologies that we treat? What did you say? Palpitations. Palpitations, good. Yeah, palpitations. Insomnia is a good one. Pain, that cardiac pain or chest pain. Good. You can certainly use that, but um, a lot of times the pericardium channel, they'll say restlessness. And for the heart, they'll say insomnia. One odd one that they put on there, it's not too odd if you think channel pathways, heat in the palms. So somebody's having trouble sleeping at night, their, their hands are hot, heat in the palms. And the pathway got up here, it's really straightforward. Remember, channel starts in the heart, a branch goes down to its yin yang pair of the SI, there's also a branch that goes up to the eyes. And then on each side, it goes out to its points, one through nine, one through nine, and it crosses the lungs on the way. Really simple, very simple channel. And who remembers, what's the rule with crossing points when it comes to uh, the heart and the other yin channels on the arm? There are no crossing points? Yeah, there are none. There are no crossing points on the end channels of the arm. So that rule applies to the heart, the, the lung, and the pericardium. All right, so as far as standout point functions locations, one, very simple. It's found in the center of the axilla, big for location. Center of the axilla, what do you have to be careful of with your needling angle and such? Pneumothorax, right? Same thing, you have to go up into the axilla, don't go straight into the ribs. Just like for any um, point in that area, any point on the ribs. Most of the, the functions just have to do with local things like shoulder problems and such. It's really not a major point for Two will get asked about a lot. How many soon up from the medial left condyle is it? Three. And they love those points, the ones where it's, the point is part two, but it's three soon up. The one where the measurement and the number are kind of close, but a little off. They love those. What artery do you have to be careful of in this area? Yeah, be careful of the brachial artery, right? So that's three soon up, be careful of the brachial artery, definitely. Part three, you got the medial, or medial malleol, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> medial epicondyle right here. And you just find it, just go just off of that. Just on kind of the lateral side of it, part three, right in that joint. And it's on a joint, so it clears heat. Most points in the upper arm we mentioned last time treat phlegm. We are on the heart channel, 
So certainly it's, we're talking about heat in the heart, and phlegm in the heart. So certainly this affects the spirit, the shen. Calms the spirit, calms the shen. You know, it is a water point, so we do kind of think of like throwing water on that heart fire. Then remember the channel's weird, right? It dips all the way down to here, and then you've got four points just like right in a row, right? You're jammed within like a soon and a half. So heart four is one and a half soon up. You want to know it's just lateral to this tendon. They could ask about the tendon. That's the flexor, carpi, ulnaris tendon. Just lateral to that, or you could say on the radial side. And remember, you've got four, five, six, seven, all in a row, just half a soon apart. So four is one and a half up, and then five is one up, six a half up, seven right there, so all right in a row. Out of all of them, four is probably the least significant. If anything comes up about four, It'd be A, you know, just knowing it's the Jing River point. They always could ask big picture questions. It is said to be good for sudden loss of voice. Which, if you remember, Jing River points, we do think of for like respiratory conditions, voice, things like that. So that would kind of fit with the Jing River. But other than that, not a really major point. Not one that gets asked about often. Five, on the other hand, anybody remember anything about five? Yes, good. Some people say it's for the heart chi because it's good for the heart rhythm. So like your heart function. It's good for the heart rhythm, heart function. So like if you had an arrhythmia, if you have palpitations, you know, heart five could potentially be a good one for you. It is said to benefit the tongue, so for also good for the voice. Because remember, it is the Luo point, and the Luo channel of the heart does go to the tongue. So it's the Luo point, the Luo channel goes to the tongue. Some people remember this one as like the Jackson Five. You know, the Jackson Five, they were singers, right? So the tongue. <laughs> And also, like, they had a lot of rhythm. They were good dancers. So, you know, people think of it as, oh, that's the way to remember for the heart rhythm and the whole voice thing. So there is a certain concept that people have in mind that heart five is more for the heart chi. Heart six is more for the heart, not chi, but... Blood. Not blood. Yeah. The re they remember that because it's said to be good for night sweats. So therefore, we kind of think of heart six as being good for the heart yin, because it's good for night sweats. Heart seven is good for the heart blood. Heart seven is good for like heart blood deficiency with anxiety, insomnia, dream disturbed sleep, things like that. Heart seven is good for those things. Heart eight, we think of being good for heart fire. That fits the idea of it being a spring point. It's good for heart heat, heart fire. So mania, irritability, delirium, that kind of stuff. What's that? Heart eight? We're just going in order, so we're on heart eight. Uh, no, we did five, six, and seven. Five, five was for the chi, that was the one that was for the rhythm and the tongue. Six was for the yin, so that was one for the night sweats. And then seven was the one that was like the blood, anxiety.
and then eight, yeah, for the heart fire. Now, in terms of finding eight, it's where we remember the tip of the thingy. <laughs> 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 oh, the tip of the thingy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Tip of the pinky hits when you make a little fist. Which metacarpals is that going to be in between? Fourth and, five. fourth and fifth, yeah. Fourth and fifth. And nine remembers the corner of the nail, but the one that's on the inside here. The one that's closer to the ring finger. And heart nine is the usual. Revive consciousness, clear heat. Question. Any questions there? Heart starts in the heart and ends in the eyes. Remember, love at first sight. The meridian starts in the heart and goes down to the small intestine. Branch one from the heart up the esophagus to the tissue surrounding the eye where it ends. Branch two, from the heart to the lungs, to heart one, to heart nine, ends on the radial side of the fifth finger, and there are no crossing points. You don't have a lot of functions that come up. It's mostly local stuff. So even though there's a lot of points, it's actually a really fast one to go through. So alternate name, it's the hand, yeah, the hands high up. Organs entered, it does have an extra. It enters itself, the SI, it's yin yang pair, the heart. What's the extra one it goes to? Stomach. <laughs> It's 1 to 3 p.m. Tell you that. Now this one does have a very big standout channel pathology. Anybody remember what it is? Really unusual. Oh, I heard you. Yellow sclera. Yellow sclera. This is the one that has that yellow sclera. Now that sounds like you think it's jaundice, a liver problem. It could very well be from a Western medical perspective. The person might have jaundice, but um, from TCM, keep in mind the small intestine separates the clear from the turbid. So that if it's not, if you're not separating the clear from the turbid, that might result in a discoloration that we call jaundice. So small intestine could treat that. That's its big standout. The rest of it just has to do with its pathway. I mean, it treats like sore throat because the channel goes up through the throat. Deafness, because remember the channel goes to the ear. A weird one. Does anyone remember swollen cheek, like mumps, for example? Remember, I like, guess I eighteen. It's kind of like the teardrop one down here. It's like swollen cheek. But think like mumps or something. Is that swollen cheek, or is it like the swelling? Specifies cheek. That's the weird thing about it. If it just said swelling, that wouldn't be so unusual. And again, you have a more complete list, but that's some of the ones that tend to be big, tend to get asked about more. Now, even though it's a relatively long channel, it's one that is mostly connect the dots. It's not really one that you have to worry about a lot of unusual pathways and such. You know, I mean, just as a reminder. And again, you don't have to write down every single point because that's just know your locations. Connect the dots. We just will emphasize some of the offshoots if there are any. Are you have one in the corner of the nail here. All right, then we go two, three, four, five. Just up the arm here. Six, seven, eight. And that's just connect the dots. There's no unusual branch, really nothing to mention. 
The only thing is I'll mention a crossing point in that area. Actually, no, actually, the crossing point is higher up, so we haven't even gotten to the crossing point yet. So one through eight, just connect the dots. Then there's nothing on the upper arm. We basically go all the way up until we hit nine back here. There, that's where you kind of hit a crossing point. LI14 is said to be a crossing point. There'll be a little offshoot to LI14 right around that area. Then we go up to nine. And again, no, no special offshoots to mention. Remember, it just zigzags around the scapula. We hit nine all the way through 13, just zigzagging around the scapula. No special, you know, offshoots to mention. Until we have to go to those certain points that all young meridians go to. So remember, there will be a little offshoot that goes to what are some of those points? Do 14. Do 14. Stomach 12. Yeah. We'll have to hit do 14. We'll have to hit stomach 12. And then we go up the neck here, 14, 15, there's 16 back here, 17, up the angle of the mandible. And we'll, as we go through the points, I'll remind you of some of these, but just kind of showing you there's not really much in the way of special pathways here. 18, that's the teardrop one, 19 in front of the ear. Really, uh, the only offshoots that are really worth a mention here, you know, this channel is mostly connect the dots. The only offshoots that are really worth a mention is from stomach 12, we of course have to go to the organs, right? So as we mentioned for other channels, from stomach 12, we'll have a branch that goes to the organs that we mentioned. Small intestine, heart, stomach. And we'll say hi to Ren 12 and 13 while we're there. Just like the stomach did. Just like the stomach did. Hi, Ren 12 and 13. Well, it's down there. The only other branch that's really worth a shout out, remember there's a little branch that enters the ear. Said to enter the ear. It's the opposite of the stomach channel in terms of the stomach had all these little offshoots, all these little branches. The SI, mostly if you know your point locations, you're going to be good as far as that goes. And just connect the dots and then just know those couple little offshoots like enters the ear. Other than that, you're going to be fine. Now, as far as crossing points, I always remember this one as it's kind of helpful that this is the small intestine, and you know, I is one. Roman numerals. As far as crossing points go, it's kind of a channel of ones, because you might remember it enters GB and UV, one. Crosses both those points. It also crosses GB and UV, 11. It also hits UV, 41. A lot of ones, right? A lot of ones. And then it hits stomach 12, which all young meridians except the UV have to do that, so that's easy. Ren 12 and 13, so we kind of have a 11, 12, 12, 13. And of course, all young meridians have to go to do 14. So we've got a lot of ones, and then we kind of have this 11, 12, 13, 14 thing for remembering some of these. What's that? It doesn't cross LI14? Oh, it does. I just already mentioned that one. So, <coughs> yeah, you can include that one in here as well. LI14. So, it does have a lot of crossing points. They're not necessarily going to ask you about all of them. They may, they may not. It's hard to predict. But 
one of those ones where at least there are some, you know, there are some things that can trigger the memory. If you kind of remember it's the one with all the ones, that might be enough to help you on certain questions. All right, so let's go through some of the points. Even though there's a lot listed, it's actually pretty fast to go through them because it's not a major channel for functions. <coughs> one, though, has a very odd function attached to it. Does anybody remember? Lactation. Promotes lactation. I mean, again, of course it's a well point, so of course it can be used to revive consciousness, but that's not unusual. All well points do that. But this revive, this promote lactation, very unusual. I mean, why would small intestine one do that? Two, that. <laughs> Three, pretty much the same except. Three is the master point of the? The do. So you could use spleen three to open the do. Four and five are more location than anything else. Anybody remember a couple carpal, carpal bone they like to ask about? Yeah. So you've got the Triquetrium, the hammy. Actually, the way they ask it, I know the way they tend to ask it. So you've got the base of fifth metacarpal. You've got the triquetrium. And then you've got the head of ulna. And point-wise, remember, between the base of the fifth metacarpal and the triquetrium, you've got SI4. And then between the triquetrium and the head of the ulna, you've got SI5. love to ask about those locations, making sure that you know those carpal bones well enough to answer that. Function-wise, not big. Yeah? Is the Hesse form right or what? You are talking about SI6? Um, SI6 is more on the head of the ulna, because the pisciform is going to be like on this side, and SI6 is back here. So SI6 is more on the head of the ulna, like in a little depression. So I do like to ask to make sure that you kind of know these. Now function-wise, SI4, it is the source point, and we said before, <laughs> source points on Yang channels are not huge, but there is something about this one that sometimes comes up. Since this is the channel that separates the clear from the turbid, you might use that to remember that SI4 is said to be good for jaundice. The channel separates the clear from the turbid, so the source point, good for jaundice. Five, not much to say. Just a little bit of stuff. But six is a big point. Benefit stuff? The eyes. Yeah, big point for benefiting the eyes. It is a cheek cleft point, so of course you could use it for pain. But benefits the eyes is probably the standout you'll see from that one. Seven also, not much for a function usually, but how many soon up is seven? Five. Five up from the wrist. They like that one just because it's really the only one on the forearm here. So knowing that it's five up. Eight's another one. They just really like the location on this channel. It's in between what two landmarks? Olecranon, 
say it. <laughs> the medial epicondyle. It's in between the olecranon and the medial epicondyle. SI8. Funny bone. It's funny bone, exactly. What do you have to be careful of hitting with the needle? <laughs> yeah, the ulnar nerve. You gotta be careful of the ulnar nerve. It's right in that gap. So if you needle straight in, you're gonna go right in the ulnar nerve. That's why it's the funny bone. I mean, the nerve is right there. So if you hit that area too hard, it tingles, it feels strange. It feels funny. <laughs> Now, 9, 10, 11, remember, all of these points zigzag around the scapula. I would just remember there's one thing that tends to come up a lot about 11. So if, if that's a scapula, and if you hallucinate, <laughs> it kind of can be. That looks like an acorn. Remember that. <laughs> 9, 10, and 11. They kind of make a little triangle. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> Nine, ten. NSI 11. They kind of make a triangle, but they will tell you usually in point location classes not to rely on this being a perfect triangle. They will usually tell you to remember that 11 is one third of the way below the inferior border of the spine of the scapula. So you have to find the inferior border of the spine of the scapula, go one third of the way down, so you kind of divide this into threes. Yeah, I had to do it perfectly because I didn't measure. But about a third of the way down from the inferior border of the spine of the scapula. And that's where you would find SI11. Eleven, it's a big point for moving chi and blood because a lot of muscles cross in that area. So a big point for moving chi and blood and shoulder dysfunction. <coughs> Remember, it's also said to promote lactation. Lactation, because it's basically on the back side of the breast. I mean, there's a lot of bones and things in between, but it is basically level with the breast. Well, 13, those are ones I don't really have listed because just know their locations. They all, all of the points in this area mostly just benefit the shoulder scapula. There's not a uh, unique function to highlight. Fourteen and fifteen. Again, not mostly just local functions. You know, that's why this channel is pretty easy to kind of whip through. It's mostly just local functions but they very often like to ask the location. So, SI 14, where, how do you find it? Three soon lateral to T1. Remember, that's why there's no outer back shoe next to T1, because that's where SI 14 is. There's no outer back shoe next to T1, SI 14 is located there. So SI14 is three soon lateral to T1, and 15 is two soon lateral to C7. Very common points to get a written question about, and not unusual at all to get a practical one of those. Because a lot of people will forget. They'll put it on the arm, they'll, a lot of people will forget where SI14 is. Yeah, they'll put it on the shoulder, or they'll put it on the scapula. A lot of people forget that. 16 we already talked about when we went over the stomach channel remember we talked about the ones that were level with the Adam's apple so 16 is the one that's posterior to the SCM Adam's apple level we already talked about that mostly just local functions throat <coughs> Seventeen level with the angle. Angle of the mandible, yeah. You find the angle of the mandible, and then just go right in that little depression between the SCM and the angle of the mandible, right there. You mostly think sore throats and stuff because there's a lot of lymph nodes right here. This is right near your tonsils, so think sore throats, release exterior, you know, local function. 
And you'll find that in general, the yang channels of the arm, it's a lot of local functions, a lot of release the exterior, a lot of local things, not a lot of unusual stuff. 18 is another one that they like for location, right? The teardrop one, where you find the outer campus, you go down until you fall off the zygomatic bone, and then it's right there. Teardrops, go under the zygomatic, right there. That's probably why it gets that swelling of the cheek pathology that it's said to do. <laughs> Local point right there for it. And another one in terms of order of points where they like to say what points line up, Remember, 19 is the one that's right in front of the tragus here. And remember, there's three points that are said to line up in front of the tragus. SI 19 is one of them. What's just above it? Sanjao, 21. And just below it? GB2. A lot of people will remember it by 21 minus 19 equals 2. Of course, at that point, benefits the year. All of them do. And as far as the extra pathways go, the only one for the SI that's worth mentioning is the TMM. And there's really not much to say about it. Just remember the SI TMM. If you look at a picture of the SI TMM, it's just one big shadow over the scapula goes up the arm here, goes all over the scapula, and then goes up and enters the ear. So I would just remember, covers the scapula. All scapular disorders, SI, TMF, and it enters the ear. Urinary bladder. The meridian starts at UB1, up the forehead to do 24, and GB15 over to do 20. Only UB and liver connect at do 20. Two vertex branches. From vertex to GB7 through 12, and from the vertex into the brain, emerging at do 17 and rejoining main channel at UB10. Outer line, UB41 through GB30. GB30, very good clinical point for treating urinary bladder. GB30 to UB40 at the popliteal fossa. The inner line is UB10 to do 14, 13, and UB11. Enters the kidney, urinary bladder near L2. Down the sacrum, rejoins main branch at UB40. And the main branch is UB40 to UB67. Kidney, all yin organs except the spleen. The main meridian starts on inferior aspect of little toe, joins the spleen and liver at spleen 6, enters the spine at do 1, goes up the spine internally to the kidney. Branch 1, from kidney to urinary bladder. Branch 2, from kidney to liver and lung. It ascends the throat to terminate at the root of the tongue. Branch 3, exits the lungs to the heart and pericardium. Branch 4, from DU1 to REN3 and REN4, parallel to the midline of the lower border of the clavicle at kidney 27.
Pericardium. The main meridian starts in the chest and emerges at the pericardium. There are two branches. The first branch is from the chest. It emerges one soon lateral to the nipple, down the arm between the tendon of palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis, and it ends at the ulnar aspect of the middle finger. Branch two, from P8 crosses the palm to the tip of the ring finger at Sao Jiao one. San Jiao Meridian. The main meridian starts at San Jiao 1, goes up the forearm between the radius and the ulna to San Jiao 14, crosses the gallbladder to meet at SI 12 on the way to Du 14. From Du 14, it meets GB 21, useful clinically, descends to the stomach 12, down the chest to Ren 17 and pericardium, down the abdomen to link the three jaws. Branch 1, from Rin 17 to the supraclavicular fossa, up Sanjal 16 to Sanjal 22. Round the forehead, down the cheek in a J, and terminates at SI 18. Branch 2, at back of the ear, separates and enters the ear. Emerges at the front of the ear at SI 19 on to Sanjal 23, joins GB channel at GB. The gallbladder meridian. The main meridian starts at the outer canthus, goes along the temple to gallbladder 3, San Jiao 22, and stomach 8, follows the channel to GB 20, to Du 14, and stomach 12, down the supraclavicular fossa to GB 25 and 26, and liver 13, goes into the sacral region at UB 31 through 34, and to GB 30. GB41 to GB44 on the lateral side of the fourth toe. Branch 1. From the outer canthus to stomach 5 and stomach 12. Branch 2. Emerges behind the ear and enters at San Jiao 17. Exit at SI 19 and stomach 7. And it ends at the outer canthus. Branch 3. Stomach 12 down the chest to the liver and gallbladder down the hypochondriac region to the genitals, crosses the pubis and emerges at GB30. From GB41 to liver 1 is the fourth branch. The liver meridian. The meridian starts terminal phalanx big toe, joins at spleen 6 and ascends medial thigh, crosses at spleen 12 and spleen 13, encircles the genitals and meets ren 2, 3, and 4, continues up to liver 14. Branch 1 from the lower abdomen to curve around the stomach and enter gallbladder and liver, to the hypochondriac, the throat, to the nasal pharynx, and from the eyes to do 20. Branch two, from eyes to the mouth and inner surface of the lips. Branch three, from liver to lung.